Oh, there we go, guys. That feels like a better fish. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Andrew Nordby. If you haven't seen my YouTube channel, please go check it out. Fishing with Nordby. It's linked down below. I put a ton of videos out here on Lake Gunnersville, but today we're doing a video talking about the fall transition. I'm gonna give you some tips, three main tips for fishing the fall transition. I'm out here on Main Lake today, and we are gonna start looking for the bait and then we're gonna find the fish. So, my first tip, find the bait. I'm not talking just a little bit of shad, I'm talking a lot of shad. If you can find a lot of shad, big balls, balled up somewhere, there's gonna be bass close by. Uh, the, the fish typically are moving from main lake back into creeks. I'll show you what that looks like here on the map. Uh, we're out here on, on main river and uh, they're gonna be moving from like channels. So this is main river, you got a bridge. Sometimes they'll school up by the bridge, but often they're gonna end up back in these creeks. So you wanna look for uh, pinch points. That's my second tip. So like this bridge right here, that's a big pinch point. That could be really good. Uh, any points, oh, any points coming off the bank? Let's see, there we go any points coming off the bank like that oftentimes hold fish any road beds my map shows these blue lines are road beds any road beds going back into your creeks are going to hold fish and your pinch points your bridges if the baits there the fish are going to be there we're going to get started we're going to go look for the bait i'm going to show you guys what it looks for on my graph i'm going to start going back into some creeks Let's see if we can find them find the bait let's go Okay, back in this creek, we just found the bait. We really did, this is crazy. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. So when I graph, typically I run down imaging, I run side imaging, and I got my map. So let's hop over here to down imaging. Look at this. Oh my gosh, that's a big school of white bass. But look at this. That's a bunch of bait. That's a million of them right there. That's a thousand of them. That's probably 10,000 of them so many bait right here and you got all these fish loaded behind it we're in 20 feet uh, the white bass are out here kind of towards the channel but as we get up on this point these fish are going to be up on here i think so i'm really excited we found the bait next tip is to match the bait to the bait <laughs> match your lure to the bait so I'm fishing for shad I'm fishing for bass that are chasing shad I'm gonna throw shad style baits the Alabama rig gets really hot this time of year let me show you guys which uh, one I'm using using this one right here with these spinners on it this is a Mo Bling rig uh, but I'm putting chunky shads on it really it's just matching the bait I got these shad colored baits on it uh, three and a half inch four inch baits these are reaction strike chunky sheds and I got a couple Castaic Jerky J 3.5s because the baits not very big it's about I don't know three four inches long so I'm matching the size of the bait the look of the bait dropping down to these fish and we're gonna start fishing with the the Bama rig I also got a spook tied on if they come up busting I got a little swim bait and a crank bait so I got all these things that imitate a little shad and we're gonna fish till we find a few of them but we found the bait second tip match the lure so if you are fishing a pond with a ton of bluegill or if I'm on the north end of Gunnersville where there are a ton of bluegill up in mats grass mats I'm gonna throw uh, something that imitates a bluegill so like a bluegill colored chatterbait a bluegill colored square bill on the edge of that grass I'll throw a frog in the mat if the bluegill are popping and they'll come up thinking it's a bluegill stuck on top of the mat normally uh, you can do that in your ponds too. They're gonna start hitting top water a lot in the fall. So, let's get started. Just tied on the old Grand Recon. Looks like a little shed. We're gonna cast it around out here. See if we can get these fish to bite. They're on top of this hump. Usually, I burn my crankbaits. Fish are chasing shed. You wanna find the active fish burn it, do a stop and go. Sometimes you just do a steady retrieve. 
a lot of floating eel grass here on the lake right now. That doesn't help. I would not be able to throw that bama rig to this eel grass too well. If that wind blows it off of here, it'd be good. There's one. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's a big old school of white bass down there. That's fun. The largies will be mixed in with the whites. You guys might have seen some of my videos. We catch some big largies when the whites are there. But it's just a matter of getting them to bite. Whites are still fun though. They're good eating too. You can flay those up. Look at this guys. I got live scope on. Bait is just everywhere. These bigger marks on the bottom under them, that's that's bass. That's what we're trying to get a hold of here. Let's make it happen. Oh, there we go, guys. That feels like a better fish. Yes, that's a bass. It's coming up to jump. Oh, stay down, stay down. Yes, all that yield grass, man. Wow. <laughs> that is what we're after right there, guys. That is a thick one. Real thick. Big old belly on him. Those crankbaits, get them, man. When there's that much bait down there. You burn it, you make it stand out. You make it look different than the bait looks and they just react tell you what that's a nice one right there two and a half probably Let's see buddy <sighs> get him go see oh he's coming up the jump oh there he goes back down <laughs> oh isn't that crazy out here deep you got all this eel grass makes it hard to fish you guys appreciate where your lakes don't have floating eel grass because Gunnersville is really getting chock full of it. It's making it a little hard to fish, but that just means fish are less pressured, right? Hooked up again, guys. Another one. What we got? Doesn't feel near as heavy as that last one. It's <laughs> another white. That's a bigger white. Bigger than that last one, even. That's awesome. So many whites here. Whew, they'll hook you too if you're not careful. Get a hook in the hand. That's a fat white. He's probably 14 inches. That's awesome. Another one. All right. Yep, we found them. Took me about 30 minutes of graphing and going back into the creek, working my way back, seeing how far back they were. They're about halfway back right now in this creek and I'm telling you when you find wads of bait there's gonna be wads of fish I love it I love it another white that crankbait looks just like a shad a grand recon I got this one on Carl's bait and tackle killer there you have it guys once you find the fish stay there till you figure them out they're gonna feed the third tip is in the fall oftentimes they're very time sensitive they're on a schedule early in the morning late in the evening is your best chance to catch a big one or catch fish in general in the fall and all year really but especially in the fall they feed in schools early in the morning and it slows down late in the evening it's pretty good my top three baits fishing here south end on Lake Gunnersville, crankbait, the rig, even more so as winter and late fall approach, a spook and a swim bait, big swim bait or little swim bait, just match it to the bait. So hope you guys learned a lot in this video. Subscribe to my channel for more tips. See me catching more fish here on Lake Gunnersville. We're gonna catch you next time, see ya.